I'm glad to see everyone's in their seats. Thank you for that. Uh, welcome to the White House today, Jamie included. Uh, welcome to the White House today uh, for your daily briefing. And uh, before I take your questions, let me uh, make a, a bit of a statement. Today, the Senate Judiciary Committee approved Patricia Millett's nomination to be a judge on the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit. This is an important step toward filling that court's three vacancies. Millett is a leading appellate lawyer, having argued before the U.S. Supreme Court 32 times, and seven former solicitors general of both parties believe that she is, quote, ideally suited to serve on this court. Republicans cynically opposed Millett's nomination today in an effort to obstruct the President's constitutional responsibility to fill judicial vacancies. But the D.C. Circuit has more pending appeals per active judge today than it did when any of the pre uh, previous President's four nominees to that court were confirmed. In fact, during the last administration, the same senators who voted against Millett's nomination today had no problem voting repeatedly to confirm judges to the 9th, 10th, and 11th seats on the D.C. Circuit. One of those seats was to a classmate of mine, Brett Kavanaugh. Uh, so Senator Sessions, for example, voted to confirm that nominee. Uh, and yet, and now says that the lack of a workload uh, at this circuit, uh, in this court, is the reason to oppose this nomination when, as I've demonstrated, that is a, a spurious argument. That is why we are confident that when the full Senate considers uh, Millett's qualifications, it will confirm her without delay. With that, I'll take your questions. Darlene. Jay, thank you. On Snowden, what is the White House reaction to Russia's decision to grant an asylum and is the decision by Russia some sort of a review to President Obama? The Russian Federal Migration Service has confirmed publicly that they have issued Mr. Snowden temporary asylum for one year and allowed him to leave the airport. We are extremely disappointed that the Russian government would take this step despite our very clear and lawful requests in public and in private to have Mr. Snowden, Snowden expelled to the United States to face the charges against him. Mr. Snowden is not a whistleblower. He is accused of leaking classified information and has been charged with three fel felony counts, and he should be returned to the United States as soon as possible where he will be accorded full due process and protections. This move by the Russian government undermines a longstanding record of law enforcement cooperation uh, cooperation that has recently been on the upswing since the Boston Marathon bombings. Russia has said they're not going to send him back. So where does the effort by the administration to get him to come back to the U.S. to face prosecution, where does that go from here? Well, we will obviously be in contact with uh, Russian authorities, uh, expressing our extreme disappointment in this uh, decision and making uh, the case clearly that uh, there is uh, absolute legal justification for Mr. Snowden to be returned to the United States, uh, where he is uh, under indictment on three charges, felony charges, for leaking classified information. He's not a dissident. He's not a whistleblower. He's been charged with a crime. He will be accorded upon uh, return to the United States all of the rights and privileges uh, provided to defendants in this country under our system of justice. And uh, we've made that view clear both publicly and privately in our discussions with the Russian government. Uh, so I'm sure those discussions will continue. Will the President now not go to Moscow in September as originally planned? I don't have a scheduling announcement for you today, but obviously this is not a positive development. Uh, and we have a wide range of interests uh, with the Russians, and we are evaluating the utility of a summit. Do you, uh, you see this as a deliberate attempt to embarrass the United States, as Senator McCain says? Uh, we see this as an unfortunate development, and we are extremely disappointed by it. We've made clear that uh, there is legal justification for Mr. Snowden's return, uh, that he would be accorded uh, full rights uh, accorded to defendants in this country and protections uh, under our system of justice. and. Uh, you know, in terms of motivations for a decision like this, you know, I would uh, leave uh, Russian authorities to describe them. Well, what are the diplomatic repercussions for this this move? What are are there some options that you can take other than well, I'm not, I'm not, again, I think Darlene asked me about 
Uh, Moscow, I, I made clear that I don't have an announcement today. Uh, you know, we are evaluating the utility of a summit uh, in light of this and, and other issues, but I have no announcement today on that. I guess what I'm asking is, are you rethinking this reset in, in U.S.-Russian <clears throat> relations as a result of this that, that Hillary Clinton had begun? Our relationship with Russia, as is the case with other uh, important countries around the world, is based uh, in realism. And it is a simple fact that the so-called reset in our relations with Russia produced positive benefits for American national security and for the American people. They produced cooperation from Russia uh, on the transit of uh, supplies and materiel to Af our uh, troops in Afghanistan. They they, it provided uh, cooperation with Russia in dealing with Iran. It provided a cooperation with Russia that led to the uh, New START Treaty. Uh, it provided other forms of cooperation uh, that benefit the United States and the American people and our national security. Throughout the process of the evolution of our relations with Russia over the past four and a half years, we have had conflicts with Russia. We have had disagreements with Russia, and we have been extremely clear about those conflicts and disagreements. Uh, most recently and uh, seriously over Syria. And that has been the case and will be the case moving forward. But it is simply, uh, I think, if those who s might suggest that we should not have engaged in uh, our efforts to uh, with the Russians upon uh, President Obama's taking office uh, would then say that the benefits that were uh, a result of that engagement were not worth it. And I don't think that's the case. I don't think anybody would argue that that's the case, sensibly. Yes. Jay, what do you think the Russians are up to? Obviously, by granting uh, Mr. Snowden temporary asylum, they must have known that this was not going to go over well here at the I White House. I suspect they did, yeah. But they did it anyway. So what do you think they're up to? Well, I was just asked that question. I'm not going to ascribe motives. Uh, I think uh, Russian officials can speak for themselves. We are obviously extremely disappointed in this development. Uh, you know, we have a, a broad and uh, important relationship with Russia. It encompasses areas of cooperation and agreement as well as uh, areas of disagreement and conflict. Uh, and, uh, you know, we had long stated, uh, as had President Putin, that we did not want this issue of Mr. Snowden to uh, become a problem in our bilateral relationship uh, because of its breadth and importance. Uh, you know, so we will obviously assess this and, and be in consultation with the Russian government moving forward. And Jay, you said that Mr. Snowden is not a whistleblower, <coughs> but given the fact that the House last week uh, had a vote on these programs that came very close to uh, I guess delivering a blow to these programs. Uh, there have been hearings uh, going on this week. Patrick Leahy, the chairman of uh, the Judiciary Committee, uh, has questioned the utility of these programs. The president is having some lawmakers over at the White House today, some of uh, whom have uh, called into question some of these programs. Didn't Mr. Snowden, in some sense, do the American people and, and people around the world a favor in disclosing these programs, given the outrage that's been expressed about these programs? When you take an oath to uh, protect the secrets of the United States, you're bound to protect them, and there are consequences if you don't. There are also procedures in place for whistleblowers uh, and uh, that are available to those who would uh, blow the whistle, if you will. The unauthorized leaking of classified information uh, has and can do enormous damage to our national security interests. And uh, those are just the facts. Now, in terms of our... But if he had never come out and disclosed these programs, people wouldn't even know about them. We wouldn't be talking about these programs now. He would still be in the United States. But he, he decided well, I, to do I, this. I, he disclosed I, I, I these think programs. That, and, and Jim, I think maybe you didn't know. I mean, obviously, there, there has been a, a, great, a great deal relieved, uh, 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 revealed because of the release of unauthorized classified information. But the fact of the matter is, as we've discussed, uh, these are programs that uh, have been uh, reviewed uh, and overseen by Congress, by the courts, uh, that uh, uh, contain within them, in them uh, protections uh, that uh, 
are, are designed to achieve the balance that is uh, necessary between our security and our privacy. Uh, and the President has made clear that he uh, wants that balance, supports that balance, believe that balance, believes that balance has been found, but also thinks that there ought to be a debate about these issues and discussion about these issues. And, uh, you know, he's engaged in that. He is meeting this afternoon, as uh, I'm sure you know, with uh, members of Congress, both Republican and Democrat, both uh, from the Senate and the House, uh, on these issues at his invitation, uh, and uh, including uh, members who have been very critical of the programs uh, that we've uh, been discussing on, uh, under Section 215 and 702. Uh, the fact is, you know, our uh, intelligence services need to have tools available to them to help uh, protect our national security interests, to protect us from attack. And I think most Americans would agree with that. We also uh, design our programs in a, in a way and put in safeguards and uh, layers of oversight to ensure uh, that those programs uh, do not uh, abuse the privacy of American citizens. And uh, that is the balance that the President was talking about. That is the balance that uh, has been a focus of the implementation of these programs. And, and there is an ongoing discussion about these programs. And, uh, you know, under the administration through the ODNI has undertaken an effort to uh, declassify and release more information about them in the wake of uh, the, uh, the Snowden leaks, and uh, I'm sure that process will continue. But I don't think that uh, we can sensibly say that uh, programs designed to uh, protect us from uh, terrorist attack uh, you know, are not necessary in this day and the age. The President believes that these programs should have been kept a secret that well, — Again, you're, you're conflating a bunch of things here. The, the, the reauthorization of the Patriot Act and FISA, and these, these, are, this is, you know, these are known facts. Congress has known about them. The public has known about them. There's no question that there are details about programs that have been uh, — are now known because of the leaks. The question — the President obviously believes that it's inappropriate uh, to leak highly sensitive classified information because that can and has uh, done and can do harm to our national security interests. It can uh, put people's lives in danger. Jim. Can you explain to the American people, is this just a legal issue that the White House is upset at Russia because it didn't follow extradition procedures? Or is, does Snowden actually still have in his possession things that the United States government is concerned about? that could be turned over to, to Russian intelligence? Uh, what I can say about that, well, it's, it's certainly not just a legal matter. There is the matter of our relations with Russia. There's the matter of the uh, release in an authorized fashion of classified information and, uh, and the possible release of more uh, classified information. But let's be clear, Mr. Snowden, has been, since he left the United States, uh, in possession of classified material in China and in Russia. Uh, and uh, simply the possession of that kind of highly sensitive, sensitive classified information uh, outside of secure areas is both a huge risk and a violation. Uh, and as we know, you know, he's been in Russia now for many weeks. So uh, I can't get into uh, further detail about what he possesses or what, uh, you know, what kind of disclosures there may be or have been. But, uh, you know, there is a huge risk associated with, as anybody who works in this building and handles classified information knows, uh, removing that information from secure areas. You shouldn't do it. You can't do it. It's wrong. I'm not minimizing the other issues, but I'm, mm -hmm. <clears throat> is he still a danger to United States? I would States? refer you to the intelligence community for assessments, of, uh, you know, damage assessments, and uh, in terms of damage, the damage that's occurred and uh, and could occur. I, I, I don't, you know, I'm not the right person to respond in detail about that. Who, who are the Major. Uh, we were in Senegal. The president told us he had not spoken to Russian President Vladimir Putin. He told us he didn't have to, didn't think he had to. Mm -hmm. Has he placed any calls since then? Has the vice president? We've publicly not, discussed the fact that he spoke with President Putin 
I forget how long ago, but on this map, I think they discussed a range of issues. Is could you describe the president's personal level of disappointment about this turn of events? His level of disappointment is reflected in the words I just uh, spoke. Works very disappointed, extremely disappointed in Russia's decision to provide temporary asylum to Mr. Snowden. And, and uh, we made clear both privately and publicly that uh, there was ample legal justification for his uh, expulsion from Russia and return to the United States. Uh, that's a discussion we've had with, with Russia as well as with other countries that uh, might have been considering uh, uh, providing uh, asylum to Mr. Snowden. And it, uh, those views were, I think, clearly stated both publicly and privately, so they weren't I don't think there was any confusion about them. Did the Russian government in any way let the administration know ahead of time it was going to do this? No. Uh, Senator McCain, in addition to saying this was a slap in the face, said the administration ought to look at a wide range of possible reactions. Among those, he listed expansion of NATO to include Georgia, expansion of the Magnitsky Act, left names under that, mm -hmm. and more efforts to deal with dissidents in Russia being prosecuted. He has a couple of names. Are those things you would broadly acknowledge could be part of the menu I, I, of options before the administration in reaction. I think we're uh, still uh, you know, reaching out to Russian government authorities and counterparts to uh, both get a formal confirmation of this information that's been uh, publicly announced and to uh, have discussions, further discussions about the decision and, and, and what's happened here and uh, our view that Mr. Snowden uh, should be expelled and returned to the United States. I don't have, I don't want to speculate about, uh, I'm, not gonna specu I'm not going to speculate about consequences or uh, next steps, um, you know, even on the issue that Darlene raised, uh, you know, I don't have uh, any, anything to announce at this point. You mentioned that this has been overseen by Congress. Senator Wyden said on the Senate floor yesterday that it's his belief, based on the release of some classified documents, that there was an effort by the administration to mislead Congress about some of the email surveillance going on. Is it the administration's position that every time administration officials have briefed Congress, they've done so truthfully and that there was you no know, effort I think, to I mislead? Think there's a, Jim Clapper has addressed the specific issue here, and this I would, I would, well, I, I don't think that's uh, uh, separate from what uh, some in uh, on Capitol Hill have uh, included in the assessments that you're citing, and I think uh, Director Clapper has addressed that. On the broader issue, I can tell you that Congress has been briefed in numerous venues on these programs, including public testimony, paper briefings, and classified sessions, and I have seen reports of 22 briefings on the 702 program and nearly as many on the 215 program. And uh, I think you can check with Leader Reid and Senator Sham Chambliss and Senator Feinstein and Congressman Rogers and Congressman King, all of whom have said that all members were fully briefed on these programs. Uh, and there's not many things that Democrats and Republicans agree on, uh, but this seems to be one of them. Now, you know, we are undertaking an effort to, uh, you know, evaluate these programs and, and as the ODNI demonstrated yesterday, provide more information where that's uh, where that can be done in a, in a way that doesn't compromise uh, further uh, our, our security. Uh, but uh, the fact is these programs have been fully briefed to Congress, to uh, members of the relevant committees as well as leadership, and in some cases broadly to uh, uh, all members of the House and the Senate. So uh, I, I think that what we've talked about in the past here is that You know, we have a, a situation where some of these, some of these, some of some of what we do to make sure that the United States uh, is protected and that our interests are protected has to, by necessity, be secret. And there's congressional oversight of these kinds of programs, and that con oversight has to, by necessity, be, uh, be conducted uh, behind closed doors. And uh, you know that that of course will remain the case even as we engage in a process where as I said uh, about the ODNI, we're, we're providing as much information publicly as we can. One last question before I let you go. Uh, Senator Blumenthal in his press conference just before you came out said that it was his interpretation that senior White House officials were, in his words, extremely enthusiastic 
about the concept of adding an adversarial component to the Foreign Intelligence Service Court or Foreign Intelligence Surveillance process. Is that a fair characterization of the White House attitude about this concept that Senator Blumenthal will be here, will not be here, but others will be mm -hmm. talking about with the President today? I'm, I'm not going to characterize uh, our position on different uh, different proposals that have been but the idea sure I mean, but, 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 I, I, but rather than uh, engage in a public in I understand the question major what I'm saying is I'm not going to engage in a uh, discussion about our, or characterize our views on proposals that have been uh, put forward and and certainly there are uh, th th there is more than one uh, except to say that we're in you know we're in, we're in conversation with members of Congress about uh, various ideas and we'll continue to do that and and as the president has said uh, continue to take steps to uh, improve the effectiveness of these programs uh, working with Congress. Was there, is there a gap between extremely enthusiastic and you re repeatedly tell no, us that really the president I'm saying the balance has I'm been not, struck? I, I'm not, well, I think the president, as he has made abundantly clear, welcomes the discussion and debate. He believes that the balance is essential. Uh, and uh, I, I think he, he certainly doesn't doubt that there are ways to improve the effectiveness of the programs that we have. Senator Graham um, calls the release of Edward Snowden a game changer in U.S. Russian relations. Is that going too far? Look, I, I think I've said uh, clearly that we are uh, extremely disappointed uh, that the Russian government would take this step, despite our very clear uh, and lawful requests in public and in private, that Mr. Snowden be expelled and returned to the United States. Uh, I, I, you know, again, as I've said in answer to previous questions, I don't have. Uh, I don't want to speculate about uh, what will become of our ongoing discussions with uh, Russian officials about this matter or about other uh, matters that we have on the table between us, uh, except to say that we're obviously uh, very disappointed about this development. Does that mean you have not concluded that uh, there's no chance now of, of uh, Russia turning Snowden over to the U.S.? Uh, I wouldn't say that we've uh, reached conclusions. Uh, at this point, we're going to be consulting with Russian authorities, uh, Russian counterparts, about this matter. On another matter, in yesterday's talks with uh, House Democrats, the President reportedly said uh, the administration is considering ways to, to uh, improve the circumstances of at-risk youth, particularly minority <coughs> youth. Can you talk to me about some of, those, uh, some of those ways? Can you give me any specifics? I think the President came out here and talked uh, a little bit about that. Uh, uh, not that long ago on a Friday, uh, where he surprised uh, the Me. occupants of this room, <laughs> you and others, uh, by his appearance. Uh, I don't have anything to add on, on to that except to say that he is obviously interested in, as many are, uh, what we can do uh, as a country and at various levels uh, to ensure that our children uh, have uh, opportunity to uh, be educated and to uh, join the economy in a productive way. But can you at least confirm the President told Elijah Cummings he's looking for ways to help at-risk minority youth? I, I wasn't in the meeting, Wendell, and, and I didn't get a, a verbatim readout. I'm not, I, I'm not contesting that. I just, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't hear that. Yeah. Jay, you said a little bit earlier that the White House is, quote, evaluating the utility of a summit. Does that mean that the White House is evaluating the utility of the G20 summit in St. Petersburg? Will you continue, and perhaps you wouldn't go to Russia at all, or are you referring exclusively to I'm a one-on-one -on -one summit? I'm referring to bilateral summit So the, without a doubt, we will travel, the White House will travel to St. Petersburg. I have no changes in our travel plans to announce. Uh, another topic that's been heated between the U.S. and Syria uh, and Russia is the topic of Syria. We heard today from Bashar Assad, who left Damascus, a first public trip. He went off to a former rebel stronghold. Um, the red line's been crossed. The U.S. is now, as you guys have acknowledged, aiding the rebels directly. But now the Syrian regime is almost claiming victory. So has the White House's policy towards Syria failed? Uh, first of all, I hadn't seen that they declared, declared victory, but I would uh, take I, th I would take every and I'm sure you can take what Bashir al-Assad says to the bank because his words his words have been so credible for so long. Uh, so, uh, with that immense caveat, I would say that 
Uh, we are working with our partners and allies and directly with the opposition to strengthen the opposition and uh, continue to uh, help unify the opposition as it uh, engages with Assad's forces and as it uh, works to help bring about what has to be a political transition to a post-Assad Syria. On the issue of uh, the use of chemical weapons, uh, you know, we have said and continue to say that all parties in Syria should facilitate the UN team's efforts to complete its mission to investigate the use of chemical weapons. It is critical for the UN to be able to visit all of the sites for which it has received credible information indicating the use of chemical weapons. And the UN must be able to talk to key witnesses, doctors, and affected individuals and examine and collect any physical evidence available without any interference or manipulation from the Syrian government. And I say this because there has been some indication from the Syrian government about its willingness to allow for the UN investigation to proceed. And uh, I would refer you to my opening remarks, which is, uh, you know, when it comes to statements by the Assad government, uh, there's a certain history of uh, a lack of credibility, so that, that you know, promises need to be backed up by actions. The President is meeting today with the President of Yemen, 56 mm -hmm. of the 86 detainees uh, at Guantanamo that have been cleared for transfer are from Yemen. When will we learn that those transfers begin to take place? and, and, and for what we wait, I guess. Well, I, I, I would not uh, anticipate any announcements today uh, on this issue with respect to whether, when, or under what circumstances Yemeni detainees may be repatriated. As you know, uh, the President, uh, well, I'm, I, I think as I said yesterday, I anticipate that the President will reiterate to President Hadi his firm commitment to closing Guantanamo uh, and his decision to lift the moratorium on detainee transfers uh, to Yemen in favor of a case-by-case -case approach. Uh, but the lifting of the moratorium did not mean uh, a mass exodus. It meant that uh, we would then move to a case-by-case -case evaluation uh, of each detainee, uh, which is the case in the non, and has been the case in the non-Yemeni detainees. So uh, I would, uh, while I'm sure that will be a subject of uh, discussion between the two presidents, it will not result in any announcements today. You haven't had the biggest problem, but it, the, the largest number is from Yemen, of those who have already been cleared. As a big picture issue, what is the number one issue that exists within Yemen? I suspect I can anticipate your answer, but articulate the White House's position on what needs to change within Yemen for you to start to feel more comfortable sending the dozens of Yemenis back. Well, I think the, the lifting of the moratorium reflects a, a change in policy that reflects also uh, changes in, in Yemen. And then when it comes to each individual detainee, there's a rigorous case-by-case -case evaluation made, uh, and that involves consultations with potential host governments. Uh, so I don't think it's any one issue, uh, but uh, it, 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 you know, we are obviously, in, ev in every case, when it comes to detainees and, and the possible transfer of them, uh, you know, working with host governments to, uh, uh, to receive assurances and the like uh, regarding, the, uh, you know, what happens after the the, the potential transfer. So, again, the moratorium uh, was only the first stage in a process that then begins potentially a case-by-case -case evaluation. Can I get a follow-up on that, please, Jake? Uh, Just about Yemen, sure. if you don't mind, thanks. So the President, in, in May, gave that speech on the, the current status of the detention facility at Guantanamo mm -hmm. in Cuba. He said that he would be lifting the moratorium on detainees who are connected to Yemen. And in that same speech, he said in some of these places, such as parts of Somalia and Yemen, the state has only the most tenuous reach into the territory. And in other cases, the state lacks the capacity or will to take action. And I was hoping that you could square those two thoughts. It seems to be a disconnect between lifting the moratorium and then what the president later said in that speech. No, I think that's why you have case-by-case -case evaluations and assessments made, discussions with potential host governments, uh, and I'm sure that will be the case uh, as uh, the individual detainees are evaluated uh, after the lifting of the moratorium. But he indicated in that speech, I realize what you're saying about case-by-case, -case, but he indicated in that speech that the state, Yemen, has the most uh, the state only has the most tenuous reach into the territory, and again, repeating what the president said, the state lacks the capacity or will to take action. So no, 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 you, you actually sort of changed your quotation a little bit in the second reading. The, the uh, there are certain facts about Yemen that are true, and that's why in making these assessments, 
uh, we evaluate them carefully and case by case. Uh, and again, we're not, there's no announcement of a transfer here. There was the lifting of a moratorium that, that uh, made it impossible to even cons consider the transfer of any individual detainee. Uh, now at least that consideration can take place, but it will be full and rigorous as it is in every case. Control over its territory, including I appreciate parts the effort to, to, to use the words that way, but that's not uh, obviously what I'm saying or what the President said. Yeah. Jay, uh, you said earlier that the U.S. didn't have any advance notice of uh, mm -hmm. this temporary asylum for Snowden. So how did the White House find out about it? Uh, as I think I said, the Russian Federal Migration Service confirmed publicly that they had issued Mr. Snowden temporary asylum for one year. Uh, I can't speak to every piece of the uh, administration in terms of uh, how they learned, but we were not certainly given any advance notice by uh, the Russian government. So it was through media reports? That Again, I don't, I don't. I, I haven't asked any, every individual and in uh, every principal in the President's national security team. Uh, I can just, all I do know for a fact is that there was not advance uh, notice given. And it, at what level now are the, the contacts on this issue going to proceed? Uh, I would refer you to the State Department for any contacts or conversations that might be occurring. Uh, I, at, at this point, I'm not aware of any uh, that have occurred uh, here at the White House. Would U.S. representatives in Russia, people at the embassy, uh, uh, other agencies that there, would they like to talk to Snowden at this point now that he's out of the transit I, area? You know, I, I, I would refer you to the Justice Department for uh, conversations with somebody who's wanted uh, on felony charges. Yeah. Um, Will Mr. Snowden uh, be part of the agenda on the FISA meeting this afternoon? Uh, well, it, it's certainly possible it could come up that uh, the meeting uh, was organized after the President uh, sought to invite these members of Congress last week. It was when uh, this discussion began. So uh, obviously today's events related to Mr. Snowden uh, you know, happened after that fact. Uh, but it's certainly possible that this will be discussed. I think the goal of the, uh, the President's uh, with regards to this discussion is to, um, you know, assess uh, some of the concerns and issues around FISA that have been expressed by members of Congress. Uh, and uh, I know he looks forward to the conversation and the debate. Okay. And also the uh, reactions coming in from the Hill. Uh, Republicans are saying that it shows Obama's weak foreign policy. Does the President believe that if he had a tougher foreign policy stance against Russia that the outcome would have been any different? Well, you know, counterfactuals are always hard to uh, prove or disprove. What I can tell you is, I think in answer to either Jim or Steve's question, uh, when it came, comes to the policy the administration adopted in 2009 toward Russia, uh, there is no question that uh, that reset uh, produced results that are were beneficial to American national security and beneficial to the American people. Uh, and it was a very clear-eyed approach to our relations with Russia that uh, included uh, unsparing and vocal um, statements uh, about our position uh, when Russia and the United States disagreed on matters, whether it was missile defense or Syria or other issues. This is an issue where we obviously have not seen eye to eye. Uh, we made very clear uh, representations of our position when it came to uh, the full uh, legal rationale behind seeing Mr. Snowden ex expelled from Russia and returned to the United States. We did that publicly. We did it privately. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's, it's impossible to engage in a game of what might, uh, how this might have turned out if other things hadn't happened. What we do know for a fact is that the result of the policy approach that President Obama took uh, was uh, enhanced cooperation in the uh, effort to supply our troops in Afghanistan, enhanced cooperation in uh, our effort to produce an international consensus with regards to Iran and its pursuit of nuclear weapons, uh, as well as other dividends. So, uh, you know. Those are significant achievements on behalf of American national security. Yes, sorry. Given that within one week there's been the acquittal of Bradley Manning on the most serious charge and now the escape of Edward Snowden, does the administration need to reevaluate the way it's fighting the war on leakers? I'm not even sure I understand the question. The fact is uh, there's a legal process underway with regards to Mr. Manning 
as I said yesterday, I'm not going to uh, inject myself into that as that process continues. Um, and we've made clear our uh, views about the decision by the Russian authorities to grant temporary asylum to Mr. Snowden. These are the two most high-profile cases in uh, something that's been a priority for this administration relative to other administrations. They both, within a week, seem to have gone south. Again, Ari, I, just, I, I, I think that's a statement of opinion. I'm not sure uh, what the question is. Yeah. Um, thanks, Jay. It, has the President decided there will be a consequence to this decision by Russia? Forget what it might be. I just uh, have no uh, further elaboration of our views on uh, the aftermath of this decision by Russia, except to say that uh, we're certainly evaluating the um, utility of a summit in Moscow, a bilateral summit, and, and also in conversation with Russian officials. You haven't asked for anything to be drawn up, a range of proposals, Yeah, I, I don't have anything to present to you here about the President's views on this. Yes. Jay, just picking up on what you said earlier about the value of the reset and mm -hmm. these critical issues that the United States and Russia have to discuss, if you look across the range of these, leaving Snowden out of it, um, nuclear arms reduction, missile defense, trade, democratic reform in Russia, Syria, there's really not a single major issue where the United States and Russia see eye to eye right now. So I'm wondering what the utility is of a meeting between uh, President Putin and President Obama, even apart from the Snowden dispute. What do they have to talk about that would meet your standard of a useful meeting? Well, I think I said that we are evaluating the utility of a bilateral summit in Moscow. And there is no question that there are a range of issues uh, setting aside the disposition of Mr. Snowden uh, on which we uh, are currently in disagreement with Russia. Uh, we have, over the past four and a half years, uh, engaged with Russia in a way that to try to uh, move forward uh, where we disagree and to uh, move even further forward in areas where we can come to an agreement. And, and not included in your list has been the assistance provided in the uh, uh, transshipment of materiel to uh, our forces in Afghanistan, as well as uh, Russian cooperation in our efforts to produce a consensus with regards to Iran's uh, pursuit of a nuclear weapons program. So. Uh, Again, as I just said earlier, those are not uh, insignificant uh, achievements on behalf of American national security. Uh, it's also true that the New START Treaty uh, uh, is, a, is a significant accomplishment uh, in a relationship that is, no question, uh, complicated and uh, currently uh, faced with a lot of disagreements. So uh, I would answer your question by saying, that's precisely why we're evaluating the utility of a summit. Uh, mindful of the approach we've taken all along, which is uh, it is our belief that whether it's, uh, you know, whichever country we're talking about where we don't uh, have purely harmonious relations, uh, that there is uh, a usefulness in engaging in order to see if we can move forward on areas of cooperation and to make clear directly our views where we disagree. Uh, but again, I think that comes into the evaluation of uh, the utility of that kind of meeting. Can I ask a follow-on, mm -hmm. Yemen? There's been some reports in the last few days of an increased, uh, of an uptick in um, drone strikes in Yemen. Um, I know you can't address drone strikes in a public forum, but um, should we read some of the, this as an example of the greater counterterrorism cooperation <coughs> that you uh, <coughs> alluded to yesterday that would be discussed in this meeting? <laughs> Well, that's an interesting way of asking. But the, I can tell you that we do cooperate with Yemen uh, in our counterterrorism efforts. And it's an important relationship and important cooperation, uh, given what we know about uh, AQAP and uh, the danger it presents to the United States and our allies, uh, as well as to the Yemeni people and people in the region. So uh, that cooperation is uh, important to our national security interests, and it is uh, something that we seek to build on with uh, President Hadi and the Yemeni government. April. Jay, um, back on Snowden, when was there a breakdown in communication or the relationship between the U.S. and Russia when it comes to Snowden? Because I remember in Africa, President Obama talked about how he was not going to let the Snowden matter inhibit the relationship and the working relationship, particularly with Russia. When did this breakdown happen? Well, I would clarify by saying that the President 
expressed a desire that the Snowden matter not uh, cause damage to our relationship with Russia. That's a sentiment that President Putin also expressed, and it is one that uh, we agreed on with President Putin. And, and that's partly why we are uh, disappointed, as I've said, extremely disappointed in this decision by Russian authorities. Uh, so, you know, we had, I think, as I discussed uh, regularly, uh, consultations with and conversations with, at a variety of levels, Russian government officials uh, about this matter, uh, most especially at the law enforcement level, which is uh, where this kind of cooperation normally takes place uh, and has taken place in the past. And uh, making clear what our views were on uh, the need to expel and return Mr. Snowden here to the United States. Did you see this coming? I mean, again, where was the breakdown? When did the breakdown happen? Again, I, uh, April, I would just say that you know, the Russian government made a decision today, knowing full well what our position was on this issue. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's, I think it's fair to say that uh, it's not as if, you know, Mr. Snowden were on a plane to the United States yesterday that, that returned to Russia and led to this development. Obviously, Mr. Snowden's been in Russia for quite some time uh, and had not been returned to the United States. So this has been a matter where we had not reached an agreement with uh, Russia, uh, obviously. Uh, and then Russia made the decision it made today. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us about uh, the President's conversations with the Attorney General, uh, kind of following up on Wendell's mm -hmm. question? Uh, when it comes to minorities and the criminal justice system, what is the uh, conversation uh, that the President and the Attorney General have been having? I haven't been privy to conversations like that. I would just refer you to the statements of the President on that Friday. Yeah, Carrie. On health care implementation, the President uh, reportedly told Senators yesterday that he was personally involved in trying to resolve that, that element of the health care law that prevents lawmakers and their aides from receiving the employer contribution on the health care premiums. And I'm just wondering if you could tell us what that personal involvement entails, and does that mean the administration has decided that it can deal with it administratively versus legislatively? Yeah, I just don't have details on the President's, you know, meetings, private meetings. I can tell you that, uh, you know, Congress wrote and passed the Affordable Care Act, and the law lays out details of how people will get insurance. Uh, and all, and our, on our end, rather, we're focused on implementing this law as effectively and clearly as possible for all Americans who will benefit from access to the quality, affordable insurance, insurance options and unprecedented levels of insurance, insurer competition. It's been a, the, the point of contention, though, is whether you deal with it legislatively or administratively. I, just, and so you, I, I think this is something that, you know, you, I would refer you to uh, Congress on. We're clearly uh, about the business of implementing the law that Congress uh, wrote and passed, uh, and uh, the details of how Americans, including members of Congress and their staff, will receive health care are laid out in the provisions of the law, uh, and that's the law we're working to implement. Yes. Well, Jay, on Syria, uh, with the inspectors being allowed in to take a look at, at uh, for possible chemical weapons, uh, what are the administration's expectations from these inspections? Or do you have high expectations? And, and has any additional intelligence turned up since Ben Rhodes announced that uh, the, the, the use of chemical weapons by the Assad government had been confirmed? Uh, I don't have any further uh, assessments to announce. Uh, we certainly stand by those assessments that we announced previously. Uh, what I said, I think, in answer to uh, Peter's question about Syria referred to the announcement of a decision to allow in uh, UN inspectors to three sites, I think. And I think uh, this, what we're trying to make clear is uh, the Syrian government, the Assad government, has to follow through on this commitment and allow full access, uh, the ability for the UN to talk to key witnesses, doctors, and affected individuals and to examine and collect any physical evidence available without any interference or manipulation uh, from or by the Syrian government. If the Syrian government is truly committed to an impartial and credible investigation, it will facilitate the UN team's unfettered access to all sites of interest to the UN without further delay. Uh, in other words, this cooperation cannot be conditional. Uh, it needs to be complete. 
And, uh, you know, I, I think, as I noted earlier, uh, you know, history is not littered with uh, promises made by Assad uh, that have come to fruition, especially in regard to this kind of thing. Uh, John Christopher, last one. Yeah. Uh, Jay, what attempt might the President be making in terms of a unified message to Mr. Putin from the U.S. and uh, its NATO allies? I, I, I don't have anything further uh, on that. Uh, you know, we obviously uh, discuss uh, issues like this with our allies frequently, but I have no uh, conversations uh, to read well, out no to you. No reactions yet from the I, You would have to ask uh, our allies for their reactions. Well, you have something on your BlackBerry you need well, to? Are you familiar with this interview that Secretary gave, Kerry gave to uh, Pakistan Television? I'm not. No. John Boehner. I think I got to go. I've been I've been uh, given the hook. Thanks, guys.